What's up guys and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've got a very special episode ahead of us today. A very special aircraft. It's the Burt King himself. The A-10 Thunderbolt 2, a.k.a. the A-10 Warthog. This is one of the craziest, one of the most unique, one of the most deadly aircraft that we have ever had. And I'm excited to fly it, except we, we do have one problem. From what I can tell, it's not flyable. So if we go into the marketplace here and we search for this A-10, you guys will see it's it's not rated well. It's a 1.6 out of 5. Now, we do have a couple other aircraft that have been in that realm. Even our C-130 we flew in the last episode wasn't rated well. So I figured it'd still be flyable, even if it wasn't super detailed or something. We could make it work. I was going to have us take it off from Baghdad here, just going to fly around the desert to we could see we've never flown in this area of the world. And obviously this, you know, during the, the war on Iraq and things like that, it would have been used out in these locations. So I thought it'd be perfect. Well, as it turns out, we could pretty much only taxi. So we're, we're here on the runway and like you, you, you can't throttle control up to a you, you the throttle doesn't work you see on my this this should be moving that throttle control and it, it just straight up doesn't uh, it looks like we've got a hundred or zero and and sometimes not even that the plane turns on by itself right now we're at a hundred percent throttle according to the controls but we're obviously not thought basically it just doesn't fly very well so what we're gonna have to do hold on a second are we gonna stay at a hundred percent throttle we're still at a hundred percent throttle there's no way this is 100% throttle. I mean, if we could somehow make this work, that would be fantastic. See, I'm, I'm going to take that down. Let's let's try to... Oh, now we're stuck at 5, 27. Yeah, this thing's a piece of trash. What I'm going to do is use our skew controls so we can just kind of pause it, and then I'm going to bring the plane up in the sky. You guys aren't even going to notice this really throughout the episode, but I wanted to put a little disclaimer in just so you guys know, don't waste your money on this mod. It's absolutely terrible. See, we can, we can resume here. <laughs> We're going to fall back to Earth. We'll get some airspeed, and then we'll be able to buzz the ground. Let's see if we can at least get a little... 54% throttle is better than nothing. There we go. All right, we're, we're coming straight down. So to be honest, I, I did all the research for this episode, found all my fun facts, all that kind of stuff, the things I wanted to share, the history, the, the stats, the everything. And then I get into it and, and it's not really flyable. A lot of people have had similar issues. Some people can get it working where the throttle works and you can at least fly it. I, I've been messing around with this for about 45 minutes and couldn't get it. So this is going to be our second best thing. I mean, this, this is essentially what you know we would need we're just gonna have to use it more of like a, a glider i guess so yeah this is the beautiful a10 warthog dude this is such a unique looking aircraft such a powerful aircraft such an absolutely terrifying aircraft for the enemies this thing has been around for many many decades and it shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon. So in World War II, we had something called the P-57 Mustang, and this is the successor to that aircraft. It's a fixed wing aircraft. It's meant, oh, please don't crash. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's that's a telephone pole or, or some some kind of wire. Speaking of which, by the way, I mean, look, looking at, at, you know, Baghdad here, it's, it's kind of beautiful. A lot of farmland. We've got rivers and stuff crossing. I'm not really too familiar with the area here. If we're heading west, I'm kind of hoping we're he we are heading west. If we head west up this river, we should eventually come, come by the, the town of Fallujah, which the second battle of Fallujah was one of the, the toughest, craziest battles we had out there in the war. But uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, it, it looks like a peaceful farm village. Obviously, not exactly how it went, but I guess, you know, it, it could be kind of how it was for the locals. I'm going to be honest, I don't I don't really know too much about Iraq, so um, I'm not going to speak much on that, but we are going to be talking about the A-10 here. So yeah, this was the successor to the, the P-57 Thunderbolt from World War II. And uh, basically, as we were getting into the Vietnam War, it became apparent that we needed a new style of aircraft. We needed, you know, air-to-ground dominance. And at first, we were thinking, hey, let's get some helicopters going. And I think that's where the Apache helicopter originated from. But uh, they were like, all right, let's experiment with this. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get a fixed wing alternative to that. And that is where the Warthog was born. We're really starting to lose some speed here. I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to glide. The government had a long shopping list. So basically it needed to be inexpensive. It needed to be easy to repair. 
it had to be able to take off from very short, very kind of primitive runways. Like think on the front lines of the battlefield. It's not really a runway. It's like a dirt strip out in the middle of nowhere, that sort of thing. It had to be able to take care of that. It also had to have incredible low speed mobility, which you guys are seeing in, in this right here. Like this, this is insane that we're still flying with this much control at an airspeed of 266. I think it stalls around like 130 or something like that. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about the design too. The, the wings are a big part of that. You guys notice how big, beefy and, and fat those things are. So it had all that. It also had to have long loiter times, which basically being able to stay in the air, which is a mix of, you know, the, the low speed maneuver and then also being able to carry a lot of fuel, but also being fuel efficient and be able to have long range and things like that. And on top of all of that, it had to have an extremely impressive payload and extreme survivability. It had to be able to take a lot of flak because this is like a frontline style of, of, you know, weapon. It's going to be getting shot at. It's going to take damage and it had to be able to take that damage and keep on flying. So pretty tall list, but... Uh, the A-10 ended up footing the bill. It was introduced in March of 1977 at a unit cost of $12 million, which is expensive, but uh, I mean, compared to other aircraft that we've been talking about, $100 million jets and stuff, really not that bad. Like I mentioned, it's got some super, super fat wings. It's got a lot of wing area here, huge ailerons and things like that. That's all meant to help with that low speed mobility. I'm getting really nervous here. I think, I think, uh, how fast are we going? 254, we should be good. We're just, I, we might actually be able to just cruise at this speed here. We are at about 50% on our, uh, our thrust. So we're, we're heading to ha Habanaya over there. We'll, we'll see what we can find. Let's get some, some views outside the wings. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing is so sick. And that's the, okay. Um, let's, let's head to Fallujah. So yeah, this, this river here that runs just by Baghdad, Fallujah is right here to the uh, the west. So this is where one of the, the largest battles happen. So I'm gonna say, let's let's start here and then we're gonna, we're gonna fly towards Baghdad and we can just, uh, you know, check everything out. Okay, uh, ooh, throttle up to 100. Let's hope it stays that way. I don't think it will, but we'll, we'll see, see. Just hang gliding in our, uh, our A-10 Warthog here. This thing just looks so so mean, dude. Oh my goodness. I love it. Look at all those slots for armament. We're going to talk about that here in a minute again. Let's not spear ourselves down into the ground. But yeah, this all of this below us here is uh, is Fallujah. So kind of cool there. Now, speaking of the, the design, so the, the wings, obviously big, fat. They're meant to keep this thing up in the air. Let it maneuver at low speeds. Let it make tight turns all around the battlefield to be able to focus up and hit enemies and things like that. Like, look, look how fat these things are. This thing actually, like the dimensions, it's almost as wide as it is long, which obviously is, is not a common thing. This is kind of a cool view here. So the, the actual air aircraft itself is made of like this honeycomb structure that was meant to make it super lightweight so it could fly farther and fly longer, but also make it super, super tough and rigid. The shell, the aluminum shell, like the actual skin of the aircraft, has nothing to do with its structure. And it was made that way so that if it's pierced or if pieces of it come off or if it gets hit by something, it doesn't really affect the, the airworthiness of it that much. It can take a lot more of a beating than most other jets can. Obviously, the, the, the areas around like the flight control systems and the pilot and things are heavily reinforced and this thing has an almost perfect track record of protecting pilots. It's so strong, you can straight up fly this thing through hurricanes and thunderstorms and supercells and things and the Air Force actually uses it to monitor severe weather. That's how tough this thing is. I mean, it's, it's obviously very capable from a, a firepower standpoint, but its defense is just as impressive. The engines are mounted up here, up top, not only to help shield them from enemy fire down from the ground, but also because it's meant to, you know, take off and land on those super primitive runways right on the very line of battle. So obviously you could kick up debris and rocks and things like that. And with them being up here, less likely to get hit and damaged. This is such an epic angle right here, dude. We've got so much speed, she's trying to climb on me. But yeah, look look at this. Oh my goodness. Gives you great angles to be able to see the enemies, your friendlies, the tanks you're about to take out. Just, you know, visibility for days. It can hold 10,000 gallons of fuel and its wings here. And uh, the fuel cells are lined with this like anti-explosion foam from the inside and out. So again, this thing was specifically made to take a beating. It was meant to be able to get shot 
many, 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 many times and still make it back home. They even thought about the landing gear. So I'm going to put the landing gear down here. You guys can see it's got the nose gear up front, but then it's also got these, these gear under the wings on each side. Let's put this back up. Do you notice how the gear still protrudes out of this little enclosure here, even when it's up? Like, I, I'll put it down again, and then we can put it back up, and it's it still sticks out a bit. It's got it over on this side, too. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see how it, it protrudes a little bit. They did that so that in case the landing gear malfunctions or it's been damaged or something like that, you can still land the plane. It's going to do damage. It's not good for it. But it's going to do a lot less damage than if you didn't have any gear at all. So these, these are still there and they can still roll and you can still, you know, kind of slide along the runway. One of the last really interesting things I saw from a design standpoint is that it's, it's very left and right interchangeable. Like notice how symmetrical this plane is. And, and granted, most planes are symmetrical. But even internally, it was made to be super, super symmetrical so that different components and pieces and... and you know, pieces of armor and things like that could just be interchanged. So if, you know, it, it came in and part of the right wing was damaged, if there was a left wing that they had in the scrap from another plane that was damaged, you could just move that over to the right wing of this aircraft and get it back up there. So really the, the main point of this thing was superior firepower and make it as tough, durable, and easy to fix as possible. Speaking of that firepower, the main weapon was housed right here. Now, obviously, this is flight sim, so you can't really see it, but uh, it was a 30 millimeter Gatling gun mounted right here on the nose. The internals of it were housed down here underneath the pilot, larger than a Volkswagen Beetle. So large, in fact, that it accounts for 16% of the aircraft's weight just in this gun in the nose. The recoil from this gun is so strong, it would affect the trajectory of the aircraft. So you can see it's kind of mounted a little bit to the right here. It's not perfectly in the center, and that's to help account for that recoil to make sure that the plane isn't knocked too far off course. Look at how beautiful this area of the world is. So sad to think about the loss of life and devastation and families just torn apart out here. But just look at this. This beautiful river coming through a desert on a gorgeous sunny day. My goodness, this is fantastic. Now, the, the gun, like I said, it shot 30 millimeter rounds. So that's about the size of a beer bottle. And the, the rounds were armor-piercing, incendiary, and uh, high explosive. So, I, I mean, they, they absolutely tore into anything from tanks to planes to enemy front lines to, to trucks to really anything that you could shoot them at. They absolutely decimated it. It shot at 3,900 rounds per minute, which is about 65 rounds per second. And that was just its main weapon. Again, if we look underneath, you guys can see there are a ton of attachment points for other weapons, everything from mines to bombs to, to missiles to things like that. Essentially, they were like, let's take a giant Gatling gun and build a plane around it. Like that, that it's, it's, it's a giant flying Gatling gun is what the A-10 is. But that's not all it has. Again, we, we saw this earlier. It's got a ton of attachment points here underneath the wings. So you can put mines, bombs, missiles, really anything that you want down there. I, I believe that the plane carries more weight and ammunition than it actually weighs itself. So it's it's literally just a giant flying tank in a sense. Like it's just it's meant it's meant to, to unleash as much hellfire as possible while also being super super tough to shoot down, super cheap and easy to fix. And that's that's what makes this A10 so incredibly special. Look at this thing, dude. Absolutely one of the most incredible pieces of machinery of of modern modern engineering this thing is insane so yeah there you guys have it that my friends is the a10 warthog dude so 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 sick i really want to be able to like truly fly one of these bad boys and really really break her in i've been thinking about checking out dcs i've seen a lot of comments from you guys saying like with all the military things and the top gun dlc and stuff and how much fun we've had here in flight sim that i need to try out dcs so it's it's a combat simulator it's it's like you know all about military planes and jets and things the problem is is it's incredibly incredibly detailed i've watched some videos on it and it's like you've got to do like 40 hours of research to learn how to get one single plane off the ground and all the planes are totally different so you're essentially going through a, a minor, you know, 
lesson plan of what a real pilot has to learn. So we'll see if we can figure it out. I, I think it'd be fun. I just, it, 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 it'd be a, a lot. So I, I might start tooling around with that and just kind of trying to have some fun with it. But uh, either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys in our next episode. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out.